I'm Kelly. I'm John P. Welcome to our special edition. Yeah, I guess episode. that's what we're going to call it. Why middle, not? We're going to call it the middle of the day, <laughs> first of the week, once in a lifetime. Tuesday. Monday edition live stream? Um, not Monday. I think that's a little too long, John. Okay, maybe it's not it is. Monday. <laughs> what is today? Tuesday. I think, well, but That's it is a special edition. Call, call it, that, it is early in the week. It is, uh, well, if you haven't seen, we released episode number 800 today. Yay! Congratulations, team. Thank you, team. And thank you guys for watching for so yeah, long. Thank you. Um, so we released that, and it was a very special episode. Do we have that queued up by any it. chance? I doubt it. Why, why would we have even thought about that? Why would we, because we didn't tell the guys to cue it up. So. Right. <laughs> the big, we were yeah, eating cause lunch. Because we, we were eating lunch until like three minutes ago when we got back in. But <laughs> the big news of the day was, can I tell them? Do it. The big news of the day is Livid Lobster gets a new home. We're, but not only. We're not just moving. We are buying a building. <laughs> buying a freaking building. Who does that? Um, not Apparently many people. Apparently we do. <laughs> we do. That's who. So if you watch the episode today, just go to geeky.tv slash 800 for, for the first look and the preview. Um, we, you know, I don't know where I was going with that. What was I saying? You were saying that we have this preview, <laughs> you get to see the outside, and we wanted to continue the conversation. That's what I was trying to say. With you guys live today. So we didn't make the, the, the episode really long. We didn't go into a whole bunch of stuff. Exactly. It's better, uh, it's better to spend like an hour with you talking about it, answering your questions, telling you the story of how it came about. Uh, as opposed to subjecting you to that as a big monologue, yeah. um, you know, in a one-way video. So let's go ahead and get started. I've actually, you have asked a lot of questions on social media and in the uh, IRC chat room. So I've been gathering those. So I have a bunch of questions. Keep asking in the chat room while we talk a little bit about how it came about. But um, it just... Keep asking, we're paying attention, um, and we'll get to everything, don't worry. Yep, yep. So, right, um, so, as you guys know, we started this show in 2010, and uh, we started out of a little tiny bedroom, <laughs> which you can see a, a preview of in the video at geeky.tv slash 800. And uh, we were all cramped in there. It was you, me, Dave Curley. Norm. Norm. Popina. And, yeah. And we uh, we finally oh, wow. outgrew that. Mark Zamora. I. I Nick, no. Well, no, was Nick, Nick, Nick there? They, yeah, they, Nick. They came like in yeah, August. you're right. I guess Both they of did. Them at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot of people, and we all got tired of, uh, well, smelling each other. And John got tired of. <laughs> I got smell tired of smelling the boys. And John got tired of us raiding the refrigerator. <laughs> That's true. It got, a, <laughs> it got a little crowded. Let's just say it got a little crowded, okay? <laughs> so back then, we were also in the process of growing the, the show and growing the business. We inked a deal with Revision 3 for distribution, uh, which was great. And Revision 3 was off selling advertisements and stuff, which helped fund and support all of this stuff. And then also, we had... Uh, other people coming to us, wanting us to do special projects for them, wanting us to create like commercials for them and do other kinds of custom production work because frankly our team is really good at that. Yeah. And uh, so we said, sure, we'll do that, especially because it helps us raise some extra money and we need money, you know? So, uh, so <laughs> we decided that really it was time to grow out of that little one bedroom and so we moved in here, the current yes. Livid Lobster Studios so in Addison. It's been a great, great home for us. Yeah, for three years we've been here. And uh, it's 4,000 square foot studio office space. It's all kind of combined here. Uh, so we've got offices that surround the outside of the uh, space and then the studio stuff right smack dab in the middle. And there you go. That's our. Yeah, that's there we our, go. So this room that we're looking at, there's Ken over there working the TriCaster. Yep. This room we're looking at at the moment is basically our big kind of open room, and then there are there you can see them, some of the offices. That's John that's and the mine, fish, Ken's the fish bowl. We office, call it the fish yeah. bowl. 
because it's got the glass wall so you can see out of there into the big main area. But what we do in the main area is we build things up and tear them down as need be to, to shoot different kinds of stuff. Right. And the challenge, the challenge we have, Dave, show them the ceiling again. I know this looks <laughs> simple to you guys, but you notice it's just a normal drop ceiling. This is indeed a normal office. And uh, let's show them the top of this trussing. There you go. That, now you can see how high it is. So Dave's holding his hand up there. That is a temporary truss. Um, he's just standing there and he can touch it. The ceiling is nine feet high. This right. is our trussing that's right above us. We're sitting on the set and that's the trussing. And again, we, we have the lighting and all that right above it. And, and watch this. So when I, if I come over here, let's. John, you're six uh, two. I'm about six one, you know, and you can see like I'll I'll run into this my head, <laughs> see, and the TV here I'd smack my head on yeah. it and everything else. So what happens is we can only put the trussing in here up at about eight feet high, and which is not is, ideal for any kind of studio. Yeah, um, we really I don't think you said this. We really need to get the lighting up to be lit well. Um, you know, there are certain shadows or. Um, light highlights that come on our faces or like John's glasses or my glasses when I wear glasses no. that could be fixed if we had the lighting up and kind of more away from us and just flood the, uh, the studio with light. Also another issue that we get into uh, is let's say Callie is in here shooting the Daily Show and I'm even over in our office let's right face around it, the corner. When he's listening to his I'm on a boat videos this is when it really becomes a problem. I can't be loud and noisy. So yeah, there. If I'm right there, which is around the corner, yeah. even if I shut the door, I have to sit in there and be quiet as a little mouse because um, it will come through in the recording. And so there have been, I don't know how many hundreds of times we've been in here filming something and someone's come in like the front door, like UPS comes in every day dropping off packages. Yep. And we get and you that. Get that. So we have to stop recording and redo. Redo. So there are, I mean, it's it's wonderful. It has been an amazing space, yeah. but it does have its problems for us. And and as we've grown and as we've expanded what we do as a company, it's just time to kind of get a more dedicated space and have something that we can really build out ourselves. I mean, we have so many ideas and so many. Um, things we want to do, but we're not going to put that kind of money and effort into somebody else's space. Yeah, because think about this. Let's say in the, in here, this is a it's a normal proper office building. It's a nice building, um, but and above these uh, ceiling tiles, the drop tiles in here, it's it's about a 14 foot clear height ceiling. So we could, for example rip out all the drop ceiling, yeah. change up the air conditioning, venting and stuff, and we could put bigger sets in here. But you know what, that would cost like, I don't know, $100,000? Right. And we would have to pay that cost, and we're on a lease. So imagine if you were the landlord, and you had somebody uh, come in and spend huge bucks customizing a facility that they were in, and then it was time for rent, uh, you know, let's say the contract was up and it was time to redo the contract. What would you do? Whoop, that rate is going up. <laughs> because you know they can't leave, so, that you know. Would, that would even happen if we rented the unfinished big It would. Giant yeah. It wouldn't. It, anything. It's not, it, that has nothing to do with our landlord here. No, God, they've been great. It, they've, they're great. We love them. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the nature of renting versus owning, Correct. especially in a business where things are not easily portable. Right. If we were a normal, if we were, a normal if we were office, an insurance company, yeah. and we just have desks and computers, no we biggie. Can, we can pick we up can and move. leave anytime. Just like a, you know, a, a, an apartment move. It's not easy, but you can move from an apartment to another apartment. Right. But when you build a production studio, you can't do that. You can't just move. So, we have long known this. We knew this from the day we moved in here. We knew this would not be our permanent home, but we we had to start somewhere. And this was a great, great start for us. So Callie and I have been looking for a new building for a year, almost. Yeah, yeah. we've looked. At, we looked at how many buildings do you think we looked at? God. 
50? 50, yeah. Probably looked at Probably 50, 50 different buildings. buildings around the area. And we had, we did want to stay in this specific area. Um, and so that limited our choices a little bit. But our team, actually, Dave, Ken, they move, they're from like Arlington area, which yeah. is. 45 minutes well, away? Yeah. Some of our team is lives, you know, way Sorry, off to I just, the west. Sorry, I just gave him the address. I, yeah. I would like to tell you exactly where Dave Curley lives right. now. <laughs> some of them, some people live way west of here. Some people live up north of here. Um, you know, some people live east of here. Yeah, it, so what would happen is if we decided we wanted to radically relocate the, the building, because there were other buildings we could have bought that were cheaper or in some ways better, but it would have caused hardship on the team, which is a bad business move. You don't do that to your employees if you value them. So we made it very, very clear, uh, even though we looked around a little bit, we, we were not going to move far away. So the new building yes. is one and a half miles from where we are right now. So that means it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't change anybody's commute dramatically, which is good for, for the team. Um, and so, um, yeah, that was uh, one of the big questions is, is where it is. And a lot of people have asked for the address. 13702 Gamma, Gamma Road. G-A-M-M-A. -M -M yeah, Gamma Road, and it's Dallas, Texas. So you can Google map it if you want. 13702 Gamma Road, Dallas, Texas. And one of the more important issues when we were looking for a space here in the, the Dallas Addison area was Freebirds, to be honest. Right. So a lot of people have assumed that we chose where we chose because we couldn't get too far away from you needed to have your Freebirds every day. Landing zone. Right. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Technically speaking, just so that we have the Freebirds report covered, okay, um, no, we are not moving farther away from Freebirds. In fact, I would say the distance, it's approximately equidistant, right. but it's from a slightly different angle. Um, however, However, Freebirds is going to have a run for its money because yep. Fuzzies yeah. is basically across the street. Fuzzies and Fuzzies. They have good tacos. I do love Fish Fuzzies. Tacos. I do love Fuzzies. Now, I love Freebirds more, but here's the thing. Fuzzies is like literally across the street. Right. Freebirds It's very is, easy. We can walk to it. Freebirds is like a mile and a half away. See, these are, these are the major issues when you buy a building yeah. of the things that you have to consider. Yeah, how and far away And the problems that you have. In We're not going to be next door to Sam. <laughs> what are you going to do? We're that not going to be next door to Sam. That's true. So, but we do have Walmart down the street. And Best Buy, like, right behind Oh, that's right. true. We have, we're closer to Best Buy and Walmart, but we're farther yeah. away from Sam's. That's oh, true. Oh, we're also closer to In-N-Out. Mm -hmm. There is a new In-N-Out. We're also closer oh, to McDonald's right. and Wendy's. I'm going to have to pack a lunch just to get to Chick-fil-A now. Yeah, oh, Chick-fil-A oh, no. is a hype. Poor Dave. Yeah. Dave, I can spit and hit Chick-fil-A. He lives <laughs> off of Chick-fil-A, so that... That's going to be a challenge for Dave. Tube Maker just asked in the chat room, I don't want to forget to ask him, is our first live show, where did we record that? That was actually <laughs> recorded in the uh, bedroom, in yeah. the 10 by 10 bedroom. And it was, uh, it was by Philip Nelson. Oh, that's, that's right. right. made a mistake right out of the gate. That's, that's right. right. So <laughs> Philip Nelson, the face of TriCaster and New Tech, um, actually was there for our first live show. He was in control of the switching, and uh, he, so he joined in on the, the whole... Uh, I don't remember what, what he did, but uh, yeah, in terms that was of a awesome. mistake, but that we was painted. fantastic. First at the new building, too. We're going to talk to him about that. Oh, that would be That'd awesome be great. If, he, if he came down and that did the awesome. inaugural switching at the new building. So, uh, yeah, the little, that little room we were in was like 10 by 12 room, and we painted the wall with green chroma key paint. For the uh, Daily Show. For the Daily Show. And so we had... We didn't have a different set or anything for the live show, so we just sat in front of that green screen. <laughs> that was the worst looking the video ever. First of all, first, but table. let's just be specific. When we first did the live show, we did not, it wasn't our plan. We weren't like, oh, let's start a new live show. We didn't want to do a live show. You guys wanted us to do the live show. You kept telling us to do a live show. So we were like, oh, nobody's yeah. going to want to watch this. Why would we do this? Oh, well, what the hell? We'll, well, okay, fine, whatever you want. So we did a live show just for you guys, and it was crap. Yeah. It was 
It was shite. It was okay? horrible. But just like everything first that you do in life. I mean, anything, you know, that you kind of take a risk at and start fresh and you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. It's always bad Except looking for the back. The very first episode you ever did. Oh, the first episode I ever oh, did oh, was really terrible. Oh my Dave. god, it is scary. Really bad. It's scary. Do not go, go look, look, look that up. up. Yeah, it is <laughs> scary. It's out there. Okay, but we got sidetracked. Okay, so let's finish. Uh, let's finish one track, and then we can come back. I see you. And guys again, I, I'm gathering all the questions yeah. that you're uh, asking in the chat room. So we have them secured. So we'll uh, we'll answer them soon. Yeah, there's questions about is that a business complex? Yeah. And how much bandwidth will we have? We'll get to that in a minute. So let's finish uh, this this line of thought. So we we knew we were going to have to grow into another facility. We were looking for a new place, and we finally. Uh, came across, in fact, our realtor, who is amazing, yes. Christopher Flieger and, uh, and, awesome. and Jonathan, I mean, from yes. Morro Hill. They are, if you have to get real estate in Dallas and you don't get these guys to do it for you, ask us, you're, and we will get you are there. insane. You are making a huge <laughs> mistake. I'm not kidding. If you use anyone else, you are foolish. And so you need they to They know us. what they are doing and they are fantastic at it. Good God, they are. We couldn't have done it without them. Yeah. And I mean that literally, we could not have bought it without them. But anyway. And yes, Digital Phil, John P. will nail every segment in the new building. <laughs> we were out of town, actually. Yes. I don't know if you remember. We I were do out of remember. Town. Actually, we were at, where were we? I remember. I, I it New was York the, or something. It was something. the thing before CEO. I think we were in New York. Yeah, maybe. And or LA, I don't know. We were somewhere. Remember. And Christopher sends us an email and says, a building just pop popped up on my radar. I think you guys might ought to take a look at it. And to be honest, at this point, we were, we a little had, jaded. We were really jaded because we had been looking and looking and looking. And honestly, at that point, oh, I was thinking. We had decided not to even do it. Yeah, that's right. We, we just told him, we give up. We're, we'll deal with this at another time. Yeah. We'll just continue renting and let's do this in the future. Yeah, we had given up. Yeah. We had given up. <laughs> we had to literally told him, yeah. just stop. Yeah. But he found it and he sent it over. <laughs> I, I think we should look at this one. Yeah. And I took a look at it and I was like, holy mother, because he sent over a diagram and all kinds of stuff. I was like, holy mama. If I remember correctly, we were on the train state. We were on the train. You and I were looking at it on our phones um, on the PDF or maybe like a rental shuttle yeah, I don't know. rental bus or whatever and uh we were looking at it that that looks very interesting <laughs> we responded back like we're like we will go like i we'll think we'll be we back probably, in town on yeah, monday yeah we'll be back on monday let's go monday morning and look at yeah. it in london when when we, i, I, it I may, don't no remember. it wasn't that long ago. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I don't honestly remember don't remember what where trip we were. we were on, but we were on a big trip, and so we it might were, have been London. We were traveling so much. Um, now I think it may, uh, may have been Boston. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, the point <laughs> is that uh, we came back, we went over, and we looked at it, and instantly we were like, "Oh my God! I think we finally found it." Yeah. So the the deal with this building is it is not it's not perfect. Like right when you look at it, it's kind of Dated. a mess. If you will, it's, it's dated. Yes, so it's got you know some wood paneling in it, and it's it's it needs some work. But well, but the amazing thing is, like both of us immediately saw the potential in it, uh, which was pretty impressive for both of us to be able to see that at the same time. Well, the thing about it is that uh, when you evaluate a building or any piece of real estate, what you need to be looking at is not the cosmetics. Okay. Paint can oh be changed. Yeah. Sheetrock can be fixed. What you need to look at is location and then the structural components of that facility. You know, um, this particular building is, I don't know, 40 years old, but it's like solid brick. It is well constructed. We went through the whole inspection process, which, by the way, we'll tell you that story in a few minutes, but um, <laughs> it's very costly and time consuming. The, all of the, the structural elements of the building are solid, okay? It's a great building. Yeah. The problem is the previous tenants um, never updated the interior or anything like that. Um, right. And in fact, the previous tenants were unfortunately not doing so well and went into bankruptcy. Yep. And so this building has been, uh, was foreclosed and in receivership, meaning that the courts 
are now administering the sale of the property. In theory, that also means you should get a good deal on it, but it causes all kinds of other hassles and headaches to try and buy a building that's in, those, in that situation. And so when we saw the building, what we, what we did was we walked through and we noticed that the building itself is, it looks like the 1970s called and they want their wood paneling back. Really, it's wretched on the inside. You'll see, we'll, we'll go through it once we actually take ownership of it. We're not gonna show off someone else's building, right. but when we get the keys, we're gonna walk through and we'll show you. Um, and then we, we said, despite the interior looks, the building itself has a perfect layout because the back one third of the building is a giant 20 foot ceiling yep. high warehouse. About 2,500 square feet to answer the questions that are coming in on the chat room on that. 2,500 square feet of just, just the warehouse just space. the warehouse space which we are going to convert that warehouse into a big production studio so we have all the height and all the room we want to do all kinds of things in there and we have good cool awesome plans for that yes we'll we'll share with you later not today but <laughs> later now the entire building so the warehouse space that will become the studio is 2500 square feet and the the whole building is 8500 square feet so yeah it's a big building it's uh, more than double what we have here yep and the building has a lot of cool stuff in it part uh, I would say that the building is divided into kind of three three sections, the one big warehouse space in the back, which will be the studio, right. um, and then a kind of middle, middle central section, which has a very large open room. Again, another, you know, close to 2,500 square yeah. feet room. It's a big room. And that room is one that we can have a lot of desks in and can be treated as kind of a, uh, a, a hoteling, co you know, kind of space right. where whatever employees come in they could just grab any old desk and and work there and it's a big open area so it's kind of communal and nice and then the front portion of the building are offices and conference rooms and things like that so it's a more traditional type of environment right so our vision for the new facility is that we can do lots of fun things there number one we're going to obviously do our daily jobs there um, everyone here will have a, a better, nicer space and we'll have the ability to produce better content. But number two, we could do fun things in this building that yeah. we could never do here, Indeed. like have big events. Yeah, or parties. Do like, uh, yeah, do, seriously, <laughs> do big parties. Do, we could do training sessions there. So many of you guys want us to, to do we, another workshop. Yeah, we did one of those workshops. The, the video was like production two years workshop. Ago, wasn't it? it was like at this point, it's been two years, oh. if not over. And so we had 20 people maxed out here at the studio. Yeah, and it was cramped. Uh, and it was really cramped. Um, but I've been getting emails and tweets for two years yeah. asking, when are you going to do another workshop? So that's that's one thing that we can do there, have more people there, and also do it uh, more often because it's more it's well suited to that kind yeah. type of thing. So um, the timelines. People have asked about timelines. Yes. Now that you, now that we. First kind of, of all, shared, before we yep, move on to yep. that, a couple of questions. Um, so we answered how big it was. It does not have two floors. It is a single-story building. Yep. It is. Um, but you know, not technically, in, I was thinking about it. If we ever wanted to, we could actually build a second floor on we that could. building. We could. I mean, it would be great expense and everything else. Right. But, but you know, if we had to, yeah. Real estate itself is not cheap. And uh, if we wanted to, the building, I'm sure, would be strong enough to support a, a second floor over it. Yeah, we could do that. I would think so. But anyway, go ahead. Ayers BG, is it a new building? It's about 40 years old, um, but it's a new building for us. <laughs> and yep. it'll be brand spanking new when we get done with it. Yeah, we're going to renovate um, it. That's the one thing we didn't talk about. So we, right. we walked through, we saw how the condition it was in. We felt like the it was a good deal um, to be had, but it will require a lot of work. And right. when I say a lot of work, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and say that we're looking at a quarter million dollars worth of renovation costs yeah. that we know of so far. So it's it's a big 
is a big challenge for us as a small company. It is a huge, huge challenge and um, something that we've put a lot of thought into. And already, um, thank you guys for asking even uh, B14CK Penix <laughs> as to how, how can I contribute uh, or even intern or be part of this. And uh, several of you have asked that. So thank you. Right now, we're working on ways that we can kind of open that up to um, everyone to participate in different ways. Right now, if you want to support on a monthly basis, you can go to geekbeat.tv slash patrons and help with our ongoing costs. But then at the that same really time- That really does help, by it, the way. Oh, it, it's it a does. huge, huge help. And in fact, I will even go so far as to tell you this. For those of you who are already patrons and who have been for the last few months, you guys literally helped make this occur because the yep. bank took that into consideration when it was time for our loans. Yes. So y y the, the revenue that you have contributed to our operating expenses helped us get this building. So I know that we had in the uh, in our right. patron thing, we had like A some goal gold. of 5,000 5,000 was to help us pay the rent where we are. And that indeed covers our rent. But 10000 was to help us upgrade into a new space. We didn't tell you from day one that we already had that picked out and we were working towards it. But even the 5000 that have already been contributed was taken into account for, by the bank and it helped us get the loan. So thank you yes. so much. Huge and the rest thank of you, you, if you can even contribute just a dollar or five dollars a month, we have all kinds of things we'll give you back. But the number one thing you'll get back from us is our love <laughs> and our thanks. So Yes. Big, big thank you. So more on that will be coming up very soon, so keep an eye out for that. Um, you want to continue or should I answer a few more questions? Well, there was something else there was what was what was I talking about? I think you were gonna move into the process that we've been dealing with. No, oh. I was just, I don't remember what I was saying. I'm sorry. So let's deal with questions. Let's answer questions. All right. So uh, when do we move uh, from Maron Peep? Oh, that's what I was going to talk about, timelines. Okay. Oh, that's right. You timelines. did say timelines. Okay. So sorry. first of all, before we can move, we have to actually own the building. And <laughs> we're very close. In fact, we had scheduled today to be the day we took you into the building. Right. Because. <laughs> this was a grand plan and it got screwed up. Yeah. We were <laughs> going to close on the building yesterday. Yesterday was our, our original date scheduled for closing, but um, man, I cannot tell you how hard it is to buy a building. <laughs> and there are so, it is way different than buying a, ho a house. Way, way, way different. And so there were all kinds of things that have, have snuck up on us additional requirements, additional paperwork, additional plans that um, it, we had to push closing back by at least a week or so. So we pushed it back to March 7th. Right. So in theory, if all goes well on March 7th, we'll let you know if we go to closing and have our keys and then everybody everywhere around the world will have to all go have a beer together and, <laughs> and, and cheer, cheer this thing. Uh, so. After March 7th, assuming we get our keys on that day, we then have to go through a lot of renovation. Yeah, so we have um, a contractor in place ready to go as like soon five. as we- Like we have a bunch of contractors well, for different yeah. things. Yeah. For, for different things, yeah. Uh, but a general contractor for kind of the majority of the renovation. Um, we have a roof we have to replace. <laughs> like we have to replace the entire roof. We're literally going to put an entire new roof on the building. Um, and we d yeah, so, and then also we have asbestos in the building. And so that's- In a section In of the a building. section. Um, and so we have to first and foremost, before anything else gets done, they have to go in and in that section, gut it out, remove all the asbestos, make it clean and ready for us to move back in. And then, um, and then we can continue forward. And get it signed forward. off by the state. There's yeah. all kinds of crazy things that have to happen. We, we have, learn, we're learning so much about all this, okay? <laughs> we have all when, sorts when of When you do permits. the asbestos, yeah, there has to be permits, there have to be inspectors, inspections. Once the asbestos has been mitigated, in other words, removed completely, then the contractors go in and rebuild that area so it will literally be brand new. Um, and yep. we've got all kinds of other stuff that they've got to do. So when they finish all that, we're hoping that will take 
60 to 90 days. The whole entire process. We're hoping. We'll see. And we have our, our landlords here are so, again, so nice that we have been able to arrange for them to stay here on a month to month basis while that work is being finished. However, that's very nice of them. But remember, it's still additional hardship on us because it means we have mortgage payments and rent payments to make simultaneously until that construction is complete. Yeah. So if we have to stay here two or three extra months and we all know it's like $5,000 a month here, that's ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 that we're paying, that we're double paying at least yeah. Um, so yeah, Harumph uh, is is correct. Asbestos removal is very costly, and not only is it the cost of the asbestos, we literally have to pay for a single person from the city or from the state mm -hmm. to stand there all day while the asbestos removal is going on and observe. Just make sure they're doing it to code. I mean, he literally, they're just standing there watching. So we have to pay for the asbestos removal plus that person's Yeah, time. I thought that was amazing. It's ridiculous. I, just, I was just like, wow, are you serious? But <laughs> yes, you have to have a, an inspector on site every hour while that is being done. And I, I, I guess that's because that asbestos is so hazardous that they, yeah. they want to make sure these guys are... They're not you know, bagging it up party, right yeah. or do whatever they do with it. I don't know what they do with it. But How would you like to be that guy? Yeah. And, and then get it wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If I was that guy, I'll tell you one thing. I would be standing there in a biohazard suit with big tanks on my back, and I'd be like, I'd be like Man. Darth Vader. In a <laughs> yeah, yeah inside another bubble. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Um, a few things. Uh, now, apparently, a lot of people have not realized in the local Dallas area that we have an open set. So um, they've all asked if they can visit uh, us in the new building. Well, just let me say this. You can visit us here in the same building or in the new building. I totally expect you to visit us in the new building. Yeah. But yeah, each, each and every Friday we do our live show um, and it is an open set. So you're welcome to come join us and we will be um, kind of making it a bigger deal that you can come to the off to the studio when we get into the new place. It's a little bit cooler <laughs> well yeah I mean the, one of the other the other challenges is that here where we are we can we can maybe accommodate like 20 people in here yeah. watching and and we all have a great time and we party a little before and after and all that it's fun but in the new studio we will be able to I mean we could have 50 people there we could have a hundred people there no big deal and it would be fun and uh, so yeah we want to encourage you if you if you've never been out come out we're not gonna yeah. bite hard uh, and uh, we'd, love to, we'd love to have you come visit so we have a yeah. good time what uh, other questions do we have um so will we have drop cams monty asked uh, during the renovation process so uh that leads before we answer that we have to answer a different question someone asked about internet like what kind of internet yeah, yeah. are we going to have that is, ESL. yeah, internet at the moment. We're going with AOL dial-up. Yeah, we think that 14.4 modems are the way to go. They're yeah. the future. Net zero is free. They're the future. <laughs> um, one of the things that we've decided, the only thing we've decided on is at the new building, we're going to have fiber, okay? But whose fiber we're going to get, how we're going to get it, I don't know. Don't know yet. The building does not have fiber. In fact, I don't know how they were even operating before because the building doesn't even have coax from, it doesn't even have a coax connection from, from like the cable company. So I don't know what they were doing. So what we're going to have to do is we have to kind of have a, uh, a structured plan in place where we ultimately are working towards fiber, but since that takes months and months to get installed, we have to have interim solutions right and so we're trying to figure out right now how we're going to do that whether we're going to bring in a coax connection and maybe use time warner for for a month-to-month -month basis or whether we can get some sort of a wireless um, connection like a clear or something it's we don't have that answer but we'll let you know when we do make a decision yeah. there and we, no, we won't have facts in the building, don't worry. Right. So that is the first half. The second half is, are we going to have a drop cam? Well, we want to. But the only way that we think we can have a drop cam or two or however many over there at the moment will be if we can get clear to work or 
or if we had, let's say, a cellular partner, right. an AT&T, a Verizon, a T-Mobile or something, who wanted to donate some hotspots that they wouldn't mind, you know, streaming 24-7, um, then we could stick a clear in the building, uh, I mean, a clear or a hotspot in the building with a drop cam connected and try and live stream as everything's going on. So we want to do that. Our plan is to do that. The challenge is how do we make it happen? We don't have those answers yet. Right. And and that's during the renovation process. Yeah. Of course, we'll put drop cams in the studio. You know, yeah, afterwards. After we're moved in. Once we've got permanent bandwidth in the place, then it's easy. Right. You know? We just have to figure out those those details. Now, very, very important question who come from Harumph and uh, Paul Dixon. Uh -huh. Will there be a bikini, the Geek Beat bikini team for the grand opening or permanently installed in the building? I am currently uh, taking applicants. Open casting call. We, we have a <laughs> casting call. It's just basically an open casting call. At any time, <laughs> any woman is welcome to come in here in a bikini and apply for the position of Geek Beat bikini team. And you don't so. Have a bikini. We it the idea. doesn't have. You don't Thanks. even have to. Bikini's optional, okay? Oh, but it's I, uh, the idea. Yeah. I, I told them that the that the Geek Beat Bikini team would just be roaming around the the office all day, every day. That so. is what we want. Right. That is That's the plan. not going to happen, people. It's the plan. <laughs> I don't know if we'll be able to execute very well on the plan, but it is the plan. So <laughs> right. yes, the answer I believe is yes. Curly, is it yes? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, right. it is. <laughs> All right, so speaking of interns and working there, uh -huh. a lot of people want to know, Lee Bennett included, will the increase in the studio size mean that we're um, increasing staff or we're going to do more shows? Can people start applying to work for us? Uh -huh. All of that. <laughs> Well, right now, we don't have any money, okay? Right, because it's the, all going into all the building. All the money just... Going to the right now. <laughs> Do you hear that sucking noise? That's the money flying out the door right. into the new studio. Does anybody want to play how much money is in John P's pocket? Yeah, there's no money <laughs> in John P's pocket. It's all going to the new building. Um, but Robin Houston says, congrats on the new space. Thank you. Uh, but having said that, uh, in terms of people who want to contribute and be part of the team, we are very open and inclusive. And if you really want to, you know, help out, if you if you're young and getting started and you want your opportunity, what we can provide you is just a ton of exposure and a lot of experience doing something that you can't you can't see or do anywhere else. Okay, so if you want to come over and contribute like Pablo does, like Mark did, and Nick and others in the past, we would love to have you come do that. And you yep. can help do reviews and shoot videos and learn how to handle the live streaming gear and when the opportunities arise to for us to do things that are paid and for us to increase our staff guess what we always do that from within from those people who are already contributing a part of the team we love to, to make people be permanent parts of the of the organization and you know uh, people like Gord and Ben and others can 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 tell you that's how it works here, okay? And, and even Digital Phil, who claims to be, you know, part of the team. Right, right, right. exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, we we do anticipate more growth in the future. Yes. And it's not going to happen the instant we move in there. But as things go, yes, we're going to need more people, and that's the whole plan. The whole plan behind this thing is staging it yeah. for future growth, for bigger sets, more types of... That's right. That's Dave's good. right. It's it, it, where we are right now. We are we're we're tapped out. Yeah. We can't really add a lot of room and growth. That's why the new building was so important for our future. We can put in investment in the infrastructure and set up proper awesome studios and we will have all this extra room. We could literally have 50 people working in this building easily with everybody having plenty of elbow room and so that's what sets us up for our future growth over the next 10 years yep this is a long-term plan people mm -hmm. we are uh, expecting to be around for a long time so i hope you're going to stick with us yeah yeah <laughs> what's next all right so uh will you be setting fire to the building 
Oh, as often as possible. <laughs> the only challenge is the new building is made of brick. That is true. So it's a little difficult to light on fire. No, but seriously, um, we're going to... There's actually been a lot of requests for you, John, to start up more of your tutorial yes. stuff with the welding and the knife making and all sorts of crazy stuff. So we'll definitely do more of that. We'll have more room and the ability to do some of that in that space. And, and more room for, for actually doing that safely, believe right. it or not. Because, for example, in that big warehouse space, I could literally... I could bring my forge in there and my anvil, and we could forge some knives right. live in the studio without worrying about burning the whole place down. Yeah. And a forge is 2,500 degrees like Danger Will Robinson, <laughs> but we could do it in there because it's it's uh, you know brick and walls and stone floors and very high ceilings, so we don't have to worry about lighting things on fire. And I'll tell you what, if you guys have watched our bladesmithing episode, the one that we did... Um, that was just a little, you know, taste of how right. cool it could be. Um, we've actually got quite a few questions, uh, most recently from Paul and Doofy Noor. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, will there be several studios, and are we going to rent them out? How many sets can we have in the studio space, et cetera, et cetera? Are you playing the asking and me I, doing I the see, answering? I seem to be doing that. <laughs> it's like all interview right. style. Okay, know, right? all right, I'll, I'll try and answer that. All so right, well, we can We, <laughs> we will... Um, we will segment our our big studio space into multiple sets. What we want to do is, you know, we have the same exact set that we use for the live show and for the daily show, and we want to be able to have different sets. So we want to be able to have a really cool live show that that we love and and that has a set reflective of whatever our taste may be. Right. Uh, hers, not mine. Mine are terrible. She's got good <laughs> taste. Uh, but we also want to have a daily show, and we also are talking to some other folks about producing other content in the studio and uh, there are at least there are several people who are interested in that and need help and, and indeed uh, we want this studio to become an, an asset for the community here not just for ourselves and so we will be having areas that are dedicated to uh, being able to have set changes so we, we would be able, for example, to have a set on wheels and we'll roll it over under the lights and we can shoot a show. And then if we need to shoot a different show, we move that set out of the way, move the other set, shoot the other show. This is, by the way, how big t TV facilities do it. This is how yep. th theaters do it. They have mobile sets that they bring in, they do their thing, and they move it out of the way. And we will have that kind of room so we can do that. In fact, our warehouse is so awesome that it's got a giant dock door. Yep. We can even bring vehicles, complete trucks and cars and things into the studio and do stuff with them. And we have some awesome plans even for that kind of Indeed thing. Indeed we do. Uh, so solar panels, lots of questions about whether we're going to uh, be putting solar panels on the, the roof. Not at this time, again, money issue, <laughs> we <Yeah>. have none. <laughs> um, but you know that may be something we look to do in the future, but we are going to do as many green things as we can just to decrease our running costs, um, like light fixtures and stuff like that. Yeah, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you guys all about all those yeah, plans. That, There's a all lot those of details will be coming out. But um, we have talked about the solar panels. We have. I yes. mean, we, just, just in ballparking it and stuff, we would love, just like I did at my house, to try yeah. and come off the grid. We think it would be amazing if we could take the studio off the grid. But in our rough kind of calculations... It would probably take the ability to generate in the neighborhood of 50 kilowatts. Uh, uh, we need a lot more roofs. Yeah. <laughs> we, we basically would have to fill up the roof with That's solar panels. And based on my experience, having done it at right. the house, my guess is we'd be looking at probably $100,000 worth of expense to convert that building yeah. to solar and be, and be self-sufficient, which would be badass and we would be the only people like in the universe doing what we're doing that had done that but you can that, imagine that's just a huge, huge cost said, that we can't uh, do right now uh, hail damage alert actually you'd be surprised how tough those panels are yeah. they're designed for that and they have 25 year warranties even against hail and things like that 
Are there plans for a backup generator, John? <laughs> Electric web. web. The, okay, so one of the cool things about this building is the previous tenants had a full-on data center and call center in the building, and the building is already plumbed with a complete whole power generation backup uh, yep. facility. So the building itself, if all the power went out around it, can generate its own. It's got a huge generator already in the building, and it runs off natural gas, which the building has natural gas. So when the power goes out, we will still be up. Yep. Even though everybody else may be down. That it, will be very, very nice. Again, we'll show you guys that stuff ASAP as soon as we get the keys and yep. can you know give you more videos about that. Uh, creepy and creepy kitty and uh, Livy the Lobster and Zoomer will have plenty of room to play for Right. Sure. They can just roam all over the place. <laughs> what other questions do we have? Um yeah, flood proof? Are we gonna have, are we gonna experience any proof? Is there a floods? basement? Michael's <laughs> asking. Um, uh, that's one of the reasons why we're going ahead and replacing the roof is just to avoid any potential issues because there are there are issues on the roof and so we we're at the point where we have to just kind of go ahead and do that. Well, the thing is, you don't want to go ahead and move in and then just sit there and patch the roof and patch the roof and wait things. for it to explode. No, no. We're going to complete new roof on the building. There's going to be new, all basically new everything on the building. There's going to be brick there, but everything else is going to be new. Yeah. So that when we move in, we don't have to worry about constantly having problems. We're going to have some new HVAC units. We're going to have, you know, I mean, just everything basically yeah. new. Yeah. Darren Bogat, yes, definitely. Uh, we're going to have full on tours. We're going to have uh, individual videos about the processes that we go through. We're going to be doing so much remodeling that we'll show you little projects that we're doing. And so there will be plenty of videos and opportunities to kind of go along with this entire process with us. So that's our goal in, in the entire um, building is to just make you a part of it. So hopefully, you know, that, that yeah, goes well. And if you have any questions or suggestions or anything like that. Some yeah. new, new uh, cool cutting edge stuff. Yeah, Dave's also mentioning that one of our goals is since, we, since we're gonna have this building and because you guys and we were all interested in the latest, greatest technology, we're gonna try and implement as much of it as we can in the building. We, we wanna have a smart, up-to-date, high-tech building and facility and studio so that a, we can use it to help teach you how how you know what our learnings are. Uh, B, we can use it for product demonstrations and and testing. Um, and C, just to make it an awesome place for everybody want to want to visit. Our goal as a whole team is we want the new building to be basically the Disneyland of <laughs> geeks, right? Indeed. We want you to think. You know what? This year I need to take my vacation. We're going to Dallas, and we're gonna go hang out all week with uh, you know Callie and the gang, and uh, goof yep. off in the in the in the tech heaven. So we are gonna put a roller coaster in the parking right. Lot. Roller coaster. Roller coaster is going in the parking lot. How yes. awesome would that, that be? That would be fantastic. We should totally do that. Yeah. We, and we one need. Of those we need. Slingshot things. Right. You know, yeah. I, I think we need yeah. some more money. We might need a little bit of extra money for that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, what else? So, uh, just a couple of uh, other questions. Will we be using the Ubiquity network from Hybrew? Uh, we, again, this is stuff that we'll continue to show you throughout, but we will be decked out when it comes to internet for sure. And I think our, you know, to be very direct with that, I think our plan is uh, Ken, Ken seems to be fairly happy with the Ubiquity network that we currently have in the office, so I see no reason to uh, rock the boat yeah. and change that. We will probably take the exact gear we have in here, transport it over there, and extend it as well. So we, we'll make sure we have even more access points so we have very, very good coverage. Yeah. That's 90% the plan, unless somebody, because one of the things we're very open to, and we, we'll throw this out there for all of you who have businesses and do things like this, if you have a product or a technology that you think, hey, we really should put this in the new 
you know, livid lobster home right. because uh, it, it would be a, a, a good fit. We are completely open to and encourage that kind of thing. So if somebody were to come to us and say, we have the next greatest generation of yeah. Wi-Fi meshy stuff and we'll come help put it in and we can demo the whole project and show the world what's going on, we're totally open to that. Yes, indeed. Uh, Darth Stormageddon uh, asked about donating things to the set, um, like collectibles or things like that that, that he has. Um, we were not quite there yet, so we're still working on what that will look like, and we haven't made any changes to this set because of this coming up. So again, keep, keep your eye out on our tweets and stuff, and by the way, thank you for being a patron. Um, but we'll, we'll give you more information about how you can donate that stuff and where it might go and all of that soon. But don't throw it out or have a garage sale yet. Yeah. Exactly. And send me a picture of what it is. And Rob is <laughs> Rob is asking, by the way, I guess related to my question, who should they contact if they if, if companies had things that they wanted to, you yeah. know, put into into the facility. You could contact Callie or myself, either one of us. Our uh, email Callie at are... geekbeat.tv or John at geekbeat.tv. You could tweet at us, you could Google Plus us, <laughs> any way you want to contact us. Probably email is best to start that kind of a dialogue, yeah. you know. Indeed. Um, if you're if you're just joining us, a few people are. Uh, the timeline is hopefully in the next you know three months. Ninety days. Ninety days ish to be moved so, in. Yeah. To be moved in. Yeah. How long will Geekbeat be offline during this transition? Nada. Zero. None, no. None, of course zero. not. We're not going to do that to you. Um, or us, because we need it too. <laughs> yep. So uh, we will be transitioning. We're going to stay in this place on a month to month basis until we're ready to move in. There might be some funny transition where we're kind of not in our permanent set yet, but shooting over at the new building where you kind of see it raw and not polished by any means. So you might see some of that kind of transitional shooting. Or even here. Shooting. We or may, even here, we may, yeah, example, we may take some, this all apart. Yeah, at some point, all of this has to be dismantled. So what we might do is we might have some kind of a fun transitional thing, or we might do shows not even in the studio, but we will keep bringing you the shows, and we'll keep reporting on the news, and we'll keep doing the product reviews, Indeed. and all these things we do. It's just that over the next, you know, let's say three, four, five months, there's going to be a lot of changes in the look and feel. And I know actually that Dave is looking forward to that because it's going to allow him to uh, be a little explore, bit more creative. Be, yeah, be more creative and not always have to do the same thing. And, and, and that's one of the benefits of the new building too is if he says, you know what, I really want to go try this, uh, uh, we could build a new set right there in the facility. We could change things. He can see how he likes it and uh, ask you guys how you like it. And, yeah. if, and if he wants to make another change, bang. Something very difficult for us to do here. Yes. Uh, Jamie, we appreciate, Jamie Shaw, um, your desire to participate in the patron stuff. Um, and, you know, guys, if you can't financially contribute, we do not want that to be a burden on you. So that is not ideal for you. It's not ideal for us. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, don't do you, that. Don't, don't let's, push yourself, please. Yeah, let's be very explicit. <laughs> if you are a person who... You are already, you know, having financial struggles and things. We would feel burdened knowing that we were contributing to that. That's yes, not what we want. Not okay. At all. In fact, we would rather be able. How can we help you? We would rather. How how do we help you? What do you need to know to get out of that? What are what kind of things can we do to help you? That's what we're here for. We want this. This is a community, right? We all help each other. So you, when you have needs. We'll see how can we help you. And when we have needs, and for those of you who are in a position and you say, I can spare a little bit, then, then help us a little. So th that way we're all helping each other like a big family. Yes. That's the way families work. And that's the way we think of you guys. Yeah. So, um, and I think that is it for really the questions that have come through. So we do have to actually, um, we can't continue talking much because you have an appointment. I have a dentist appointment. So, so his face worked on. yeah. <sighs>
God, I hate going to the dentist, but I have dentist work that has to be done. I'm sorry you have to go through that. Are you going to do a vlog like I did from the I dentist? I am not going to do a vlog like you did at the dentist. I don't even want to be there. I'm certainly not going to video. Right. Oh, great. And here comes Dave. Forget Dave, the dentist. Give me a little He'll bit take of care of you. <laughs> That's a preview of what we're going to be experiencing later on today. I'm scared. Uh, All right. Um, and I, some pe people keep asking about our bathrooms. Uh, John and bathrooms? I will not have our very own private bathrooms. Well, I will. <laughs> because there are no other she women. She does because there's no other women. But the yes. Rest of us, Every, uh, sure. uh, we'll just have normal bathrooms. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but there are bathrooms, so don't worry. We have bathrooms in the facility. We have, yeah. we have all kinds of cool stuff. But Honestly, we could we could talk for hours about the types of things that will be in the yeah. uh, the building. But and we will. We will for sure. It, Thank you. Can't do it all today, guys. So much for your support this morning, and all of your outpouring of support and congratulations, and all of that has meant the world to us. Thank you for being here and along for the ride, and all everything. That good stuff. Thank you for everything, guys. All right, go uh, make sure you're following John on Twitter and Google Plus, twittercom p or googlecom John. I'm sorry, I got it wrong. <laughs> Google.com slash plus John P or Twitter.com slash John Pose. Or follow her, Twitter.com forward slash Callie Lewis, Google.com forward slash plus Callie Lewis. So much easier. You'll keep up with all the good stuff coming up. And we will see you guys later on. Bye. Thumbs up on YouTube. That was. Yeah, that was my pin. Oh. My penny thing. All right, guys. Hope everybody's excited as we are. Yes. Car Charlie Barkin on YouTube said, th hello, thanks. Uh, hello from the Philippines. Nice. nice. And he said, congratulations on the new home. Oh, thanks, Thank Charlie. I don't know if, he's, yeah, I, if I we're think still he's live. On YouTube, so I don't think he's, uh, I, I don't know. Are we still live on YouTube? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, sweet. Okay, okay thanks, good. Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thanks Are for there, following along in the Philippines. Yeah. Robotic cameras may came, come later, again. <laughs> yeah, who knows? You never know. We'll we might see. have robotic cameras. Help I don't us, know. Help us get to the next to patron level. Right. Yeah, yeah, when we get to the next patron level, maybe we can get some robotic cameras or something. We'd love to have them. <laughs> that would be awesome. Wow, Chris McSee, I've been watching since Geek Brief, and I'm so oh. proud of this show. Thank you, Chris. That means the world. Yeah, I, I have to say... Um, this morning has been emotional for me yes, because of seeing all the, uh, the outpouring. I'm barely, I'm barely holding it together, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, everybody's so so uh, happy for us, and it's been so nice. I, yeah. We didn't know if it was going to be kind of an internal thing or if everybody yeah. would really uh, kind of uh, participate. So we've, we've appreciated that. Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful, guys. I, I really do have to. I'm gonna. Yeah, I have to you gotta go to the dentist. I, I, I have like you know a few minutes worth of work uh, that I can hopefully squeeze in because the. the that bank, is gonna be. You're gonna be in that chair for a long uh, time. I will be in the chair for all afternoon, and uh, um, you know we didn't even really talk about all the difficulty involved in. I'm sorry. Yeah, we. Which we, didn't we don't really need to, to, but all the difficulty involved in the actual financial transaction of purchasing a building. It's it is truly. A colonoscopy. It's, a, it's astounding. I, every time I keep thinking, okay, we're done, it's amazing how much more that we have to do. Yeah. We have to have, I mean. We get to a point where we're like, oh, we're right around the corner, and then they add 15 items to the to-do list, which increases cost by. I'll give you one example, just one little example that we learned today. Like, we're almost closing on the building yeah. okay we we're, we're like we think we're nearly done this we learned today in order to be ADA compliant which we want to be yes. and we have already we said from the moment we began talking to all of our people we our intention is for our building to be fully accessible to everyone regardless of disability or anything else because again this building is 40 years old so it wasn't built that way yeah so we said we want it to be perfect you know we have we have some of you guys have certain physical dis disabilities. You might be in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. you might have crutches or whatever, and, and we want you to feel as at home here as everyone else. Yep. So that was a goal from day one, and we thought we had all the plans and everything else. We just found out today 
that in order to meet the ADA requirements, we're gonna to have to rip out the entire front entry to the building and pour all new concrete and create new ramps, $20,000. Yep. We, Bam, 20 grand, just like that. Just like that with one email that comes with through. With one email, oh, there's By another the 20 grand. And, <sighs> and, and the thing is we knew the front wasn't ADA compliant as it was, but we thought that we had another option that yep. would cost us less and would be a lot simpler of a process. And it would be better. And, and it would better. be better. The wheelchair up and then sets him on. Yeah, 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 that. yeah. <laughs> No, we actually we have another we have another uh, entrance, uh, entrance, which is actually going to be which is going to be our primary entrance. Our to be primary honest. entrance because it's closer to the studio and to our offices. There's two entrances. There's one on the front, which I don't think I will never go in that door. And then there's one on the side, and the one on the side is the one we are going to encourage people to go through, and we're going to go through. But because technically speaking, it's not considered the primary door. The, the, the front, they, it's, it's not ADA street. compliant. Built 40 years ago, right. has all be torn out and redone, which we're happy to do, except we now have to pay $20,000. Yeah, that we weren't expecting. And, and that is only one of at least a dozen <laughs> examples I can give you. Those issues keep coming up pretty much every day. <laughs> it's impressive, is what it is. It's, I'm not angry about it at all. Right. It's just like, wow. What a learning experience uh, buying a commercial piece of real estate is. I mean, we knew it was going to be more complicated than buying a house, for instance. It's a bigger budget, it's bigger everything, but we didn't really expect this many details to be so different and to not really know what's coming is kind of just a shocker from time to time, you know? And but even though we have John a has been wonderful in making sure that all of this stuff is taken care of and so I'm really thankful for you doing all that you're doing so thank you so is, well, that, is that why John cringes every time he hears a ding from the email he's like oh, yes <laughs> that's pretty much why he's yeah. always like, like in his... shoe dropping all the time. even though we have a, a general contractor who's taking ownership of managing many 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 of the moving pieces yeah. I can't imagine what his name's Rick by the way he's awesome yeah. I can't imagine what it would be like not having him um, yeah. and not having Christopher our our realtor uh, who's been I mean without him we couldn't even make this happen at all um, and without having those two guys I don't know what I would do because I am already uh, completely maxed out I mean yeah tapped out and confused and and afraid and everything else for just what I'm trying to hold together so it, it takes brings, a team yeah it does Harumph brings up a, a, a point bring, put, just put a sign on the that door that says main entrance well we we did right. we said we said that's what we can do you know yeah. we can put you know wheelchair access or, or whatever we need to there it and doesn't matter it's our main entrance but doesn't here's, matter. here's one thing I will tell you guys that I have learned absolutely with certainty I learned this when I was renovating my own house okay and it, it, it applies even more so to commercial property anything that you think is logical <laughs> and is justifiable <laughs> has no bearing whatsoever on what a city employee in the planning and zoning commission thinks about giving you a permit right. okay <laughs> they have a set of rules and they are inflexible when it comes to administering those rules and in Indeed. one in one hand they have to be that's good right. because it means that we are fairly administering the law uh, across everyone but on the other hand it also does not allow for even minute variations in situations that would otherwise seem to be rational. Yeah. Or, and or there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. So when they tell you, guess what? It's 20 grand. You're going to be tearing out that uh, that thing and you're going to put in a new ramp. You have two options. Okay. Option A, <clears throat> yell, scream, fight City Hall, be pissed off, have an aneurysm and die. <laughs> and then pay 20 grand and put in a fucking thing or just put Get it, it done. in and move yep. on or don't buy a building or don't right. buy a building go rent something michael Hare, just thank you for your um invite or your willingness to help out uh, you are one of the reasons that we told them from the get-go we want to be ADA compliant, do everything, you know, so we appreciate your offer to help. Um, I'm sure uh, we'll invite you to be he the first is. roll yes. through. How about that? By the way, Ms. Mizuho, Mizuho, 
Shadusky. Hi awesome from France. Name. Hi from France. Well, hello. Hi. We're it's glad you're watching Thank over you. there. That's our first French that I've no. We've, we've had a no, few we've had folks a few from France, France but France. yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. I love yeah. France. I've visited France. I never it have. Thanks for, you know, amazing. making sure I visit France. You people are amazing. And by the way, your food. Croissants. Those freaking sandwiches really? and the bread. I just said I've never been to France and you're going to make me hungry? Unbelievable. I see London. I see France. Right. <laughs> Dean, Dean Dalton also asked, John, can you please tell me what your Acer laptop touchscreen is oh, yeah. called? Yes, I will indeed. This is the Aspire R7, and you notice it's got a really funky, cool screen that can go in kind of laptop mode like that, like a traditional one. Or I can fold it forward and make it completely yeah, flat. Yeah, that thing is awesome. Dave's going to hit you with a, with a close-up here for it. So see, now I have it flat, and this is a touch screen. I've actually got a sketchbook on here, so I can, like, uh, you know, do this, this kind of thing. Um, or I can set it up about like that and expose the keyboard and still have my touch screen and use my little uh, uh, mouse here if I want. Put it back like that. Use the touch screen that's on the, this open part here and the, I mean the touch pad and the touch screen. So it's a fantastic device. The R7 from Acer, yeah, uh, from, yeah for Aspire R7. And one other cool thing, I forgot, I left my, my other, no, I have my other pen right here. This one actually has a touch sensitive pen that goes with it. So I can make very light um, lines or I can make very heavy ones. Um, and, and it's great for, for treating like a, a kind of artistic sketch pad. That doesn't I really look very artistic it. to me, like John. Scribble. Yeah. That is a little scribbly. <laughs> but I will tell you. I'll tell you something. I've been, uh, this, is, this is the God's honest truth. I, I haven't even told anybody here this yet. I'm considering yeah. abandoning. I'm considering abandoning mm. my Your um, MacBook? my MacBook for that, and, and moving back to the Windows 8 platform yeah. for this, because I am finding that I absolutely love, love, love the touch screen. Oh yeah, and the the ability for myself personally to sketch and draw and everything. Yeah. So I'm considering doing that. Nice. Hello and congratulations on the new building from Greece. Hi, thank Yasu, you. Yasu, Aferistopoli. Yeah, I have no idea what so you just said. So glad to have you. I said hi and thank you very much. Oh. We, <laughs> Ditto we, what we, he we, said. We, uh, we're we're and, glad to have you watching from, from Greece. And one last thing, Paul uh, mentioned earlier uh, that the influx of all the new guests that you've seen on the drop cams, if you've been watching yeah. what's going on here, yes, that has had a lot to do with the new building. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, if you've been wondering what's been going on, then, yep. Yep, yep. <laughs> hey, I didn't get any of my verbs. I don't know why. I've been drinking mine it's the whole time. It's been sitting here the entire time, and I didn't drink it. I was so wrapped up in you guys. Okay, guys. All right, I we really, got to go. I got to go. You got to so go to the dentist. Thanks so much, and, and I'll chat with you all later on, okay? Bye. I'm taking off my microphone now. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>